As the new year begins and the new training detail takes command of the new corps, I call to mind the long procession of friends and brothers and the words of two men who more than any others laid the foundation for Fishburne Military School and its traditions during the first 75 years of its existence. James Abbott Fishburne, our founder, demanded above all else a high standard of honor and integrity in the Corps of Cadets. Colonel Hudgens, his successor, who served here for 51 years, always stressed honesty, admonishing generations of cadets that not only is honesty the best policy, but for a Fishburne cadet, honesty is the only acceptable policy. These ideals are, of course, inscribed in the honor code as relevant and vital today as it was a century ago. A cadet does not lie, cheat, nor steal, nor tolerate those who do. Rooted in individual integrity, Fishburne tradition is indeed the heritage that sets us apart from the ordinary high school or prep school. <coughs> The bond that unites those of us who have attended Fishburne into one continuing procession of friends and brothers. It is what makes Fishburne more than just another school. It must be taught, but it is best taught by example, by reflecting in your actions, your bearing, your thoughtfulness, and your perseverance, the principles and standards that have come to represent the ideal Fishburne Cadet. You gentlemen, more than any other constituency of Fishburne Military School, are responsible for inculcating these traditions within the cadet battalion. You need to realize that in most cases, a tradition like Fishburne is an alien concept to the new cadet just arriving on the parapet. An alumnus who recently graduated from a top West Coast college praised Fishburne for teaching him the life lessons and self-reliance that really prepared him for college and life. The parent of a 2008 Fishburne graduate wrote me, FMS was the best investment I've ever made. My son entered Fishburne as a sophomore with poor grades and no motivation. What he found was a brotherhood of cadets, teachers and administration, whose encouragement was there no matter what the situation. His confidence showed in his appearance. And he excelled in areas he once thought were impossible. What makes Fishburne great, says former valedictorian and battalion commander Harry Lee Temple, now a businessman in Midland, Texas, is that it gives you the chance to prove yourself to yourself. And that is the hardest test of all. A former cadet now at Virginia Military Institute describes his first year at Fishburne. I adapted quickly to Fishburne's traditional military structure. It fostered in me a sense of duty, integrity, and most of all, honor. I stopped caring about how I looked to others and began to care about how I felt about myself. The eldest of four brothers to attend Fishburne later wrote a letter to his former FMS classmates from one of America's great scientific and technological universities. He credits Fishburne 
with giving him the character and polished professional attitude that allowed him to stand head and shoulders above others his age. He stressed how the tasks that seemed tedious, pointless, and repetitive as a cadet, in fact instilled in him an unequal sense of discipline. I hope that in years to come the cadets you lead will have reason to remember you with the same pride and gratitude. Will you do your best to make this so? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes, yes, sir. When I think of cadets who deeply influenced me, I remember Bill Van Antwerp, class of 1954. My company first sergeant here my rat year, and the next year my company commander. As courageous and faithful a leader as ever passed through Fishburne. A powerful example to younger cadets, a caring leader, brilliant student, Yale University graduate with highest honors, killed at the Nang leading an infantry company in combat. Often I have touched his name again, etched on the Vietnam Memorial in Washington. He kept faith with the Fishburne tradition until the end. His sister, who lived in New York, often wrote to inquire about things in Waynesboro. And always pose this question. Does Fishburne still turn out men like Bill? My answer then was the same as my answer would be now. Yes! Yes! Fishburne still turns out men like Bill. I love this school, my friends, but today... 59 years after graduation, my sword is sheathed. Your swords will lead the cadets in the 2015-2016. Your example will reveal to them the best lesson in Fishburne tradition that they will ever know. Your success in this worthy endeavor will likewise be determined by your honesty, your good character, your productive work, and your consistency in dealing with people the way you would want them to deal with you. You are the ones who must fulfill that mission this year. Please know that within the framework of your chain of command, my door and my heart are open to each of you as you begin this wonderful journal. Any comments? Yes? What things have been done about the change that's in here? You know, surprisingly, few things have changed. Oh, the uniform is slightly different. <laughs> Schedule is tighter. You all are you all are put through. I believe a few more things than we were. I have to I have to say that certainly the curriculum is more scientific and more up to date. We we used carbon paper in those days if we needed to make a copy. But by and large, you have you have the ultimate the important things you have teachers who care about you. You have coaches who care about you. And that was that was where Fishburne stood out. I came here the year after the school had gone private. The family had sold it. It nearly closed, but the people rallied together and formed a nonprofit foundation to run it. And naturally it was not as strong as, as it was going to grow. But the teachers were still here. The long-standing professors, Colonel Childs was here 40 years, Colonel Young 50, 
so many of them for a long period of time. And of course, I knew some of them in their prime. But they, they cared. They cared about you as an individual. You weren't a number. You weren't a, uh, it was a cipher sitting in the classroom. Sometimes they cared a little too much about you. And you wound up with those same M1 rifles walking up and down that parapet out there. But it's, it's, it's the basic fundamental things, the honor system, the traditions of the school, they haven't changed very much, if, if, if at all. If anything, they're strengthened. I see alumni coming back who graduated 10 and 20 years after I did. And it's phenomenal to me how much Fishburne means to them. Uh, I feel like I, everybody always feels like his year was the golden age. It took me a long time to serve on the board to realize that a slight change in this, that, or the other just might not be the end of the world. It might be an improvement. But that, that's what, of course, it is. And it does seem to be getting better every year. And when we have people like where is our superintendent? He's, he's he got a emergency call there. He's got an emergency call. Oh, you have people like him. I remember him as a cadet. I remember him as a faculty member and coach. I remember him as a staff member when he came back. I even remember him as a groom. I married him and his wife in the middle of the quadrangle. And uh, when you see people like that who come back and dedicate themselves to the school, it means a tremendous amount. Uh, and there is a long, long tradition. I know I'm talking too long. It's sitting in this room is an individual whose great-grandfather tendered the motion that put me on the Board of Trustees 58 years ago. And of course, I knew every generation that had that sense. And there's a lot of that tradition. And the wonderful thing about it is it's not just with the families that go back that many generations. That tradition is shared and embraced, and, and it, it, you become a very big part of it if you just set foot in Pittsburgh for a year. Any other questions? I promise that be so long. Yes, sir. What was the reason why you came to Fishburne? Well, I didn't have much choice. <laughs> I, I, was, I was 12 years old. I'd been across the street at the Lutheran Day School for kindergarten through the seventh grade. My mother was related to the Fishburns, Professor Fishburne. My grandmother was his niece. And I guess I was sort of ordained that I had to come. I wasn't happy about it, but about the second or third day, I, I made an announcement that I was not going back. Sat down on a nice little chair at home that my mother treasured, broke that chair, and when my father finished with me, I was darn glad to get to Fishburne. <laughs> I never, I remember that well. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Why you attended Fishburne? What were some of your favorite things? Well, I think the uh, the there was a constant effort to make you point forward and look forward as to where you were going to go. If you were going to, uh, I went to Charlottesville to the University for College and Law School, and from the very first, Colonel uh, Young. Yeah. Uh, directed a lot of the program toward that, to make it certain I was strong in those areas. And, and I think that was, and of course the, the greatest thing was uh, the camaraderie. I still have, to, uh, unfortunately, not as many friends as I have had. One of my very best friends who I knew lived right around the corner from me long before we came to Fishbury and was a world-renowned physicist, just died this summer. But my old roommate, one of my cronies down the hall, still comes back two or three times a year. I talked to him yesterday on the phone, and uh, that, that same friendship that 
we bonded, I guess, the day I walked into the room in 1952, I guess it was, introduced myself to him, and he said, I'm from Wilson, North Carolina. My grandfather was sheriff there and hung the last man ever hung in Wilson County. I never forgot that. He, 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 I've kept an eye on him for 60 years to make sure he didn't try to hang me. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Yes, sir. How has public opinion of Fishburne changed since your senior year? Well, there was a, a, a enormous uh, slough during the Vietnam era because Fishburne was something we were also very, very proud of. And then we got through a period in the late 60s and the early 70s where I guess the best indication of it, I can say, is in the old days, you had to wear your uniform home on the train or the bus when you went home for leave. And the reason was that you were the best advertisement in the world that Fishburne could have. Unfortunately, we got to an era in this country where anti-militarism was so strong that you we didn't dare have the cadets do that for fear that you assaulted or something. But those days are gone. I like to think, and in fact, there's no question about it, there is an enormous resurgence in the appreciation for schools like Fishburne. The fact that two of the great military schools just almost as old as Fishburne, closed in this very county in the 70s is a great loss to, to the nation. The fact that there are so few schools like Fishburne. But today, I, I feel like, I hope you get that idea, that once someone talks to you, and once your friends talk to you, even though they think that attending military school is the furthest thing from their mind, that they, they somehow come to respect what you do in here. And it certainly stands out and stands you in good stead after you graduate. But yeah, I, I think there's no question about it that there's, there's a lot of pride in going to a school like this today and a lot of respect that people show you. And that, unfortunately, was not true during that little middle era, but that was just a condition of the country, and I guess because of the Vietnam War, although we have a lot of heroes from the school who gave their all in the Vietnam War for this country. Well, if anything, it's a tremendous thing, and you'll see, you notice that every time alumni weekend comes, you, you can see the difference in uh, the enthusiasm people have when you come back here. And, uh, here and, and for one, one interesting thing, we did have a, an evaluation of the alumni by an outside consultant all 25 years ago. And he had, consulted, he had reviewed the alumni from many of the prep schools in America, private prep schools, non-military prep schools. And he said the most unusual thing about Fishburne is that unlike some of the private non-military prep school, the alumni from Fishburne almost uniformly told me, I hated Fishburne when I first came. But now I realize it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me <laughs> in my life. And, and he said it was incredible how many people told me that. And of course, that's, that's important. That, that's, that's what it's all about. Well, I really appreciate it. I look forward to seeing more of you than just Sunday at brunch. Uh, it's it's going to be a good year, I know. And I appreciate your efforts. And I look forward to you. And as you leave, if, if we haven't melted them with all the hot air, <laughs> with a little candy bar, for each one of you to pep you up until lunch, spoil your appetite. Thank you. <laughs>